Hey guys, um, for this tutorial, we'll take this footage. And turn it into this. Alright, let's get started. Um, so you get the footage and you make a new composition. For this video, I'll just track this girl here. So let's just trim it. B, N, right click, trim comp to work area. And let's make a new null object to apply the tracking data to. So we double click on this and click track motion and this gives us a new track point. And what the track point is, it will track frame by frame a point in a video in the video. So let's say this point. Um the middle square is a tracking area. Where see that yeah, okay. The outer square is what searches for it. So if you have a really shaky shot, yet you'd want to make it larger. But if you make it too large, it'd take a long time to render and it'd probably be inaccurate. So for this example we could just make it like that big. It's pretty good I guess. And for this, let's make it like that so that that data right there is being tracked. Okay, let's try tracking it right now. Analyze forward. Oh, uh, messed up a little over there, so let's try to fix that. Let's go back in time. By the way, I'm pressing page up and page down. Page it down to go forward, page up to go back in time. So, this is where it starts to get messed up. See, you can move it back into place. Click this, analyze. Oh, okay. Go forward, put it back, and then analyze one frame forward. See if that works, and it did. Okay, now analyze forward to get the rest. It's kind of shaky, let's make this bigger. Okay, let's fix that. If you analyze one frame forward, it's usually more accurate than just going all out with the analyze forward button. So try doing that for the rest of this track. Oh yeah, that's the end of the video. Okay. Now what you want to do is edit your target so that the null one is selected. That's the receiver of the tracking data. So if you click apply, X and Y, yeah. You can see that the position data for this is all there in the null object. And you can see that the null object is stuck onto the footage. It's pretty cool. Okay, now what you'd want to do is get a Mimi. Let's try be like um it's really hard let's try music me closer okay just stick it on your face like that like that okay you can make it big you can you can make it small just, I like it big honestly like let's just keep it right there that's pretty good And then we parent this, we parent the picture to the null, so that wherever the null goes, the the picture goes. So you see it like that. Oh my god! 
You can see the hairs coming out. You can try right there from here. Try and go and press P for position and time uh, keyframe that point, and then go forward a few frames. See the hair coming up. Just bring it up so that it covers, and go another few frames. Just go up a little. See that hair right there. <clears throat> Just put it right there. Yeah, it's kind of cheating, but let's see how it turns out. Cool. Okay. Now, what you'd want to do to make it more realistic, or if you like it like that, just keep it that way. What I like, what I like to do, is add a little bit of blur, like one pixel, and enabling motion blur. Let's preview that. You. Yeah. Boom! You like that? From that to that. Thank you. F oh, and if you want to export it to the render queue, just go to your project. Simple as that. And blah, blah, blah. It's pretty basic, but for people that are new to After Effects, this can help them a lot. So, Alright guys, thank you for your time. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something new.